everybody. We're back. It's us. <laughs> yes, it's Megs and Rach. We are super excited to be joining you for church today. Woo woo. Give us a little <laughs> shout out in the chat, a little woo woo. <laughs> if you've joined us on Facebook or YouTube, welcome. We are so excited to have you with us. Why don't you pull out a device, another device, and jump on to hopeyouc.tv to come and join us in the chat room. It's live right now with this service. And while you're at it, pop your name, where you're joining us from, and what your go-to favorite mm. Bible verse is. I don't know about you, mine is definitely Philippians 4 verse 6, the one that says, don't worry about anything, but pray. You might love Jeremiah 29, 11. I was going to say that. Oh, stop. Oh, wow. No way. Yes. There you go. We'd I'll love to it. hear. We'd love to hear what your favorite Bible verse is with us today. Yes. <laughs> if you would like prayer today, our team are ready to pray with you. Just click the link in the chat to have a private conversation with them to believe for a miracle or a spiritual yeah. breakthrough. Come on. If you are in business or work for a business, Center of Excellence 2022 will help you reach and extend in the workplace. Yes. The courses begin this week mm -hmm. and it's not too late to register. Let's hear from Pastor David Balestri about what is on offer this year. Hey, we're in the studio today. We're uh, recording the fresh videos for this 2022 season of our Hope You See Center of Excellence. We've got two streams. One is a kingdom business stream for people that have got a business idea inside of them, maybe don't know how to get that launched, or maybe you're already in business and wanna take your business to the next level. That's a great stream. It's 12 weeks. It'll be on a Monday evening via Zoom. It's great to jump into. The second stream we're filming now as well is called Workplace Leaders. That's for anybody that's working in a company or an organization or a school or wherever it is that wants to become strengthened in their ability to really shine for Jesus, as it were, in their workplace through excellence, through uh, being understanding how to work out your faith and how to express faith in a way that's dynamic, in a way that's winsome in the workplace. If you'd like to find out more, we're going to begin all these courses at the end of February, beginning of March. Go to hopeyouseecoe.com. Look forward to connecting with you. In this year of boom, we are boldly asking this question to our community. Can we pray for you? Every year we launch this tactile campaign where we invite our community to join us in prayer as we coincide from Lent leading up to Easter. This year, church, we want to encourage you to lean into our weekly devotionals, commit to the daily Bible reading plan, and of course, ask this question to your community. Can we pray for you? Mm. Our outreach steps invite the 5105 letterbox drops, praying in our services for our local postcodes and praying in our life groups over our common prayer list. That's right. And we are launching Can We Pray For You on Wednesday, the 2nd of March. Everyone can be involved in this outreach, which is super exciting from our kids, youth, to anyone aged in our congregation. You can receive flyers at the concierge desk. For more information, speak to the friendly face in the foyer or check out the website canweprayforyou.com.au. This year, we are so excited to be joining with ACC churches to see billboards and buses with Can We Pray For You on the Hunter and Central Coast. That's right, we're so excited. Creative team, we are super stoked to be hosting our Creative One event this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Our Hunter Creatives are gathering at Shepherd's Corner Woodville with a word from Pastor Darlene. And our Central Coast Creatives are gathering at the Glee Warehouse in North Wyong with a word from Luke Taylor. This night we'll have food and worship and a word to launch us into 2022. Right. So jump into a couple, make sure you're there for a great night together. Mm. And church, we wanna thank you for your continued generosity as you sow and invest into this house. If you would like to give today, you're welcome to, no pressure, but if you'd like to, the link in the chat is right there for you to use that. Take you to the website or jump onto our Hope You See app to give. We're going to step into a time of communion. So why don't you grab your emblems and get ready as we hear an awesome message. Hi, my name's Brad and it's my privilege to lead us around communion. I want to read a scripture to you from Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
and all justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. It's summer here in Australia and a lot of kids and sometimes older people are jumping off wharves and bridges and all sorts of things into the water. If you've ever done that, you'll know that you reach a certain point and when you take that step, you're committed. You are going to end up in the water and there is no going back. This scripture says an amazing thing. And in verse 23, it talks about, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which is like taking that step off the wharf, you're headed for the water. There's no way to avoid the consequences. And then it says this amazing thing. It says that we're all justified freely by his grace through the redemption of Jesus Christ. And that is, to put it in the jumping off the wharf terms, the equivalent of being able to take back that step and to, to go back to where you were. Because that's what the word justified means. When I was a young Christian, I was told to think of it as just as if I'd never sinned. And that's the amazing thing that we're celebrating at communion because of what Jesus has done through his finished work on the cross. So I want to encourage you today, encourage myself to encourage all of us that we're celebrating today the freely given justification and that's come by the grace of God to us, all because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. When we say yes to him, when we surrender our lives to Jesus, then all of this becomes possible. So you, you might think, I'm too far gone. There's no way I could be forgiven or, or get right with God. According to the Bible today, and because of what Jesus has done, that's possible. It's possible to come back from that step where it seems like there's no way out but down. The Bible says that we're able, just as if we'd never sinned. So that's what I want us to focus on today as we're celebrating communion together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Church in Philippians 2, it talks about the name of Jesus being above every other name. This morning we're singing that strong name of Jesus and I wanna encourage you to declare the name of Jesus over your circumstances, declare the name of Jesus over your families, declare the name of Jesus over your cities, over your streets, over anyone that you know and lift it above every other name, every other thing that would come against Him. So come on church, we're gonna lift up His name this morning. Yes, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus That's it And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Yeah.
declare your name over our circumstances, over this nation, over the nations of our world, God. Church, great to be with you again. And I'm loving this series and we're continuing it today, uh, really unpacking that your tomorrow can be greater than today if you follow Jesus Christ. First of all, we're going to read from John chapter 1. If you've got your Bibles there, hopefully you have, no matter where you are. Um, maybe if you're driving the car, please don't get your Bible out to read that. Just keep your eyes on the road and listen intently. But in John's Gospel, the first chapter, it starts out like this. Let me turn there myself. Whoop. John 1 verse 12 goes like this. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Again, John writes later in the New Testament in 1 John chapter 3, the first three verses, see how very much our Father loves us. 
for he calls us his children. And that, we, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. He writes, dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears, but we do know that he will be like, we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. The writer in Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 writes this, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Again, John writes in John 14, he says, I, I am leaving you with, with a gift. He's quoting Jesus. He says, peace of mind and heart and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Right there, I've just read a whole series of passages of scriptures. I did that for a very important reason. I want to take you on a journey and a, a hopefully an understanding about of what it means to be a child of God. And the outworking of that is as your heart, your, your heart learns to be like Jesus' heart, you end up becoming transformed into pure hearted people just like Jesus is. Which also means then, because you are becoming more like Jesus, which is the goal, correct, right? Then having a growing heart of love and concern then for our broader community. You can't become more like Christ and not increase your passion and love for the people around you. That is linked um, completely. And because you have this beautiful gift from God, this, this transformed heart, well, then we must and we should look after this heart. Why would we then trash it and allow it to be abused or, 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 or contaminated with all sorts of things? So my encouragement to you today is guard this transformed heart of yours. Guard this heart that you are as a child of God, becoming more like Jesus Christ. This is a very precious and special thing. I mean, the writer of Proverbs chapter 4, which we've been hanging around in Proverbs these last few weeks, says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk and stay away from corrupt speech. A different translation, I like reading the New Living Translation, but in the New American Standard, it says it this way, Watch over your heart from, with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. The springs of life are those things that really just simply pour out of your heart. I mean, um, those, the spring of your heart can either produce good things or it can produce bad things or it can actually be a spring of toxic things. You actually determine what comes out of that spring. So what are some of the things that can come out of your heart? Well, I just got a whole little list here. I just wonder, just to do a little audit and a stock take of your heart, my heart. Does fear come out of your heart or does faith come out of your heart? Does anxiety come out of your heart or does peace come out of your heart? Does, uh, does depression flow out of you or does determination flow out of you? What about this thought? Does, are you uh, always um, pulling towards um, isolation? Does that come out of your heart, pulling away? Or are you always pushing into community? What about this idea that the legacy around your life, the issues that spring out of your heart, are there just broken and dysfunctional relationships all around you? Or is the story about 
your heart are there's these beautifully restored relationships. Maybe there's been tension or broken things, but the stories are yes, but we are all uh, intertwined together. What about those immediate uh, heart issues when you find out news for the first time? Does anger flow out of your heart or does grace flow out of your heart? Or is it hate or, 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 or an energy for destruction or is there love that flows out of your heart? I mean, Jesus made it clear about our hearts in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. Uh, Matthew writes this way, he says, Then Jesus called the crowd to come and hear. He said, listen, he said, try and understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Jump down a few verses to verse 18 that says, But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. I mean, you've heard this and it used to be a classic uh, uh, um, comment in many uh, computer training pro uh, programs. It's a cliche, but it's still very true. Put garbage in and you will get garbage out. So again, this heart that we're talking about, this gift where we're being transformed, be more like Jesus Christ, please guard that heart of yours. Again, the writer in Proverbs, he says, in addition to your heart, he says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. A straight path indicates that we are not distracted by sidetracks to your journey. It also has a real uh, picture of a sense of calling and, and remaining clear about where you're trying to go. The opposite, a double-minded person or a double-minded group of people are never able to really fulfill their God-given destiny because they second-guess every decision. Should I go to the left? Should I go to the right? Should I go up, down? Should I reverse out? Should I go ahead? Double-minded people, um, they end up getting distracted. They get distracted by pain points. They get distracted by opportunities. They get distracted by many things. But fundamentally, double-minded people end up getting robbed of peace. And think about this, they get robbed of momentum. Stay on the same path, stay on the same track, stay in the same direction, and you will, over your lifetime, build up incredible momentum around you. By contrast, single-minded people, that, that they, they are clear compared to double-minded people. They are forthright. They stay on course with a plan and a purpose for their lives. These people, I mean, if you really bump into the people who are really clear about all of those things, they can sometimes be hard to be around because they're so focused on what matters. They have little time for sidetracks or wasted time or efforts into little side eddies. They stay on course. They stay on track. They stay on purpose and they stay on message. So my encouragement is make a straight path for your life. Make a straight path around your plan, your purpose, and of course, the mission. I mean, commitment to that plan that you believe is that straight path. Um, stay committed even when pain shows up. Stay on that path even when struggle becomes real and, and quitting seems like a very nice option. Rise above those feelings. I mean, because fundamentally, they're just feelings. The Bible, I believe in Proverbs, is encouraging us, dig out, create, make a line sight, make a straight path. See, shortcuts will always cut you in the end. Remember, comfort is not your friend. We've spoken about that often. And there's a whole message that I've got around that. And you can go back onto our YouTube channel there and pick up on those messages. And I'd love for you to engage with all of the content on our YouTube channel. And uh, give us a big thumbs up if you like the message and make sure that you subscribe so that you see what new content 
is coming up. I believe God has a big plan for you. To, uh, it's up to us really to take up the challenge for our lives and to see it through. You, you'll then, if you stay on that path, if you guard your heart, if you make that path straight, then I will believe, genuinely believe, and I've experienced that you will enjoy all the benefits that God has embedded on your journey along the way. My last point is just to say, walk in the light. Um, it, it's a great way to guard your heart. It's a great way to stay on the right path. You walk into the darkness and you don't know where you're going. Well, then it's hard to stay in a straight line. I mean, Jesus said it this way in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. He says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one, no one likes a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Sometimes churches, sometimes Christians forget that we have a responsibility to positively change the world around us. How, you might say, how do we do that? Well, by simply proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and by making disciples, making followers of Jesus Christ. Not followers of the church, not followers of pastors or leaders, but followers of Jesus. Well, how do we get that opportunity to proclaim the gospel in a meaningful way? How do we get to assist people in becoming disciples? Well, I believe by simply being engaged in their regular world, whatever that might mean. Simply by not isolating ourselves, not retreating back to our safe and comfortable Christian communities, rather being part of local communities like our local football club or, um, or a netball club or literally joining a political party and not just on paper but having discourse about the issues. Becoming a member of a local business group or, or the industry association that you are a part of, being an active member in that way. Or, or locally, maybe it's about joining the parents and, and citizens group of your local school. But please, whatever you do, don't leave those spaces up to somebody else. I believe every person, every single person, as a believer, I think it should be our mandate that somehow we take an active leadership role somewhere in our communities so that we have an opportunity to put that lamp on a stand and provide light for many other people. At Hope You See, we are committed to, to everyone who calls our church their spiritual home. We're committed in a way that we want them to um, grow up into their calling, that we would do whatever that takes. And in some cases, that may even mean uncomfortable conversations because we see potential in their lives and we see a calling and we're trying to drag them up into that. We, we believe that their relationship, your relationship with God um, individually, you, that that becomes a active and a flourishing thing that that even for you in your family setting or maybe in your friends setting, that again, that your faith journey is flourishing. It's not lukewarm, it's not cold, but it's hot for God. We're also committed to you to be engaged in your local community so that you become, think about this, let me say this phrase to you, that you become a redemptive missionary in that situation. So when you take on those roles, you might be doing good work in a sense, but that you would actually own the mantle to say, I'm a missionary for God in this situation.
on that PNC committee. Yes, I'm wearing God's mantle in this location, that in that football club, on being in the community, being a, a coach or a manager, that I am actually uh, uh, that light that Jesus talked about in this situation. You are that light, by the way. Um, there's no question about it. You may not sometimes feel like a light, but you are a light on a hill, shining. Now again, Jesus says that that light provides a path. Again, not to you, and you don't have to be the answer to every problem, but I believe the light that you are, in no matter what community context that is, your one job is to create and light a path so that other people can find Jesus. Our local communities are crying out for hope and meaning. And, we're, and, and our job, I believe, is we, we want to help them become disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. So we should therefore make the most of every opportunity. But if you again withdraw into your Christian bubble, how can you ever light paths for people? I mean, Paul's advice in Ephesians chapter 5 is this. He said, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. But like those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So in those locations, in those uh, redemptive missionary positions, understand the big picture here. Yes, you can help in a tangible, practical way, but the mission of lighting a path so that people can find Jesus, when that door opens, be ready. Take the most of every opportunity, Paul says. So, in closing, let us guard our hearts. Let us be treat them as precious. Just don't let other people run ruin over them. Let, let, let's um, extend love and forgiveness to other people that allows our hearts to grow, even if you have been wounded in the past. You see, when you forgive somebody, when you um, enter into that space, you are ensuring that the pain of the past doesn't destroy your present and your future. When you forgive someone, you actually unlock another whole chapter in your heart that had been closed up. Forgiveness is such a powerful and redemptive thing. It keeps your heart soft, keeps your heart renewed, it keeps your heart refreshed, ready to serve the community that needs us most. Remember, one of the Proverbs we've been leaning into over the last number of weeks, Proverbs 4, verse 18, it says, The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which is a beautiful place to be, by the way, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. When you start in some of these redemptive missionary locations, it may just seem like a little gleam of light, but if you stay on the course, stay on the path, keep your heart right, well, again, you will enjoy what the, the writer of Proverbs there says, the full light of day. We are living in a world that seems to be just stumbling in the dark, looking for all sorts of answers, wanting to blame everybody for all of the problems. But God can and he will help you and help me create straight paths so that we can shine our light on the path so the most important thing, other people can find Jesus and become a follower of Jesus Christ, which means then that their tomorrow can be greater than their today. God bless your church. Love to hear from you. Please write to me. Um, talk to you next week. God bless you. Thanks for that message. You know, today, if you've been watching online and your heart's been stirred and you're saying, what do I, what do, I do now that I've heard these wonderful things or maybe experienced something out of the worship or out of communion or out of the word and 
You say, what, what would be the next step? Well, the Bible says that for us to come into a relationship with God, uh, it talks about being born again or being born of the Spirit of God. Well, what does that mean? In John chapter 3, we see a, 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 a man called Nicodemus come to Jesus and begin to speak to Jesus, asking him spiritual questions, inquiring of spiritual things. And Jesus says to Nicodemus in John 3.3, 3, he says, this is out of the Passion, he says, Nicodemus, listen to this eternal truth. Before a person can perceive God's kingdom, can have their eyes truly opened, they must first experience a rebirth or to be born above, from above by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, this morning, if you're saying, I need God, I, uh, maybe you know about God, you know, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be watching this, this broadcast if you weren't at least curious with God, or maybe at some point you, you were, you were in a relationship with God, but that's been many years and that's not your reality any longer. Well, can I invite you into a very simple prayer? The prayer is simple, but the impact is profound. It really is a prayer that invites a rebirth, a birth of God's Spirit to do a work inside of us that awakens us and, and, and brings us into a dynamic relationship with God. If this morning that's what you want to do, would you follow me in this prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I open my heart. I invite you by your spirit to do a work inside of me. Change me from the inside out. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I declare you are the Lord of my life. I thank you, Jesus, for your death on the cross. I thank you for paying the price for my sins. I thank you for opening a way for me to have a relationship with the Father. I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, would you, there'll be a, a, a link in the chat uh, if you're watching us live or YouTube or whatever, however you're watching us, however it is, click on the link, send us a message. We'd love to get one of our team to reach back out to you. Give us your, your email details, how we can contact you. We'd love one of our team will reach out to you and just help you with some of the next steps so that you can move forward in this dynamic and beautiful relationship with God. God bless you.
What an inspiring message. Today's service has been really great and we pray that you felt stirred and excited and uplifted as we continue to follow Jesus together. So awesome. Yeah. And like Megan said, if there's something that's stirred in your heart, why don't you jump into the chat and why don't you pop it in there and have a conversation yes. with the community around you. But today is not complete without the blessing. That's so So we're true. going to declare that over you. All right, get ready, church. Here we go. <laughs> I pray that God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in Him. Then we will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you later.